It's not about you living large with people's sweat and then going to go and beg to borrow more money to steal. We are asking, since when you remove this um, um, uh, uh, subsidy, where is the money? What have you done with the money? President Tinubu should explain to Nigerians. We are here today, as mentioned by my colleague, that given the crisis, given the economic crisis that our country has found itself, there's no way any patriotic Nigerians will not get worried and concerned about the state of uh, economic stagnation uh, in this country. Just within one year, or less than one year under this administration, inflation has gone crazy. Access to food has become a big challenge. Transport has gone off. Virtually everything that you can think of has gone off. Uh, massive looting and diversion of public taxpayers' money have equally gone off. Reckless and irresponsible decisions has equally gone off. So we are in very deep trouble. And as Nigerians, as patriotic Nigerians, we have every responsibilities and duties to draw the attention of those who have the legitimacy or who have the constitutional power to fix this problem. If some of them are not aware that many Nigerians are not able to even eat twice, I think it is important that they should understand. If many of them, they are not aware that many parents are not able to pay school fees, many women are not able to go to hospital to deliver because they do not have money so the increase in maternal mortality is, is, is in the high. A lot of young you know, children from the age of five, seven, you see them on the street, virtually everywhere, looking for what to eat. And yet the country is placed with both human and natural resources. Therefore, we must be worried and concerned with the state of the nation, with the state of their peers. And it appears to me there's a massive democratization of looting and stealing at all tiers of government and this is not what democracy is all about this is not what we have fought for and therefore uh, ensuring prudent management of our resources is necessary to mitigate the ongoing uh, trouble that we are going through so ladies and gentlemen we are here to give some recommendation to our legislators, uh, hopefully they will be able to take decisive legislative action that can control the uh, crisis that we are facing in this country. Nigeria is in their revenue situation as it appears to be short of ideas on approach to fiscal management. The trajectory of revenue from federal government shows a continuous decline in the first five years with a 45% revenue shortfall in 2018, a 45% shortfall in 2029, 31% in 2020, and 45%, uh, 41% uh, and 50% in 2021 and 2022, as well as 2023 respectively. So we are declining, you know, if you look at the number of uh, years that we are declining, uh, you know definitely something is wrong. Uh, those who are supposed to help fix the country, they are not actually doing that. These revenue shortfalls have created budget deficit and uh, have created budget deficit that have uh, precipitated our debt crisis and has grown our external debt by one. Um, 1,333% 1, from the level it was after the Paris debt by tech deal in, 20, uh, in 2005 and 2006. As of June 2023, Nigeria's total debt portfolio stood at 87.9 trillion, equivalent of 
1.3 billion US dollars and will climb to 109.338 uh, uh, trillion in 2024. Following the recent approvals by the National Assembly, uh, this definitely continues to worry us. You recall we, we've been here separately to draw the attention of the legislators that this kind of um, all the time that executive will you know, uh, send uh, directive because what I see is like directing the National Assembly to do that, not even asking them for their approval because if it is uh, asking them to you know, critique or to look at it in the international interest, the National Assembly members will have known the repercussion, the consequences of continuously borrowing uh, without even respect or without compliance with the fiscal responsibility law that clearly states what loans should be collected for. We cannot be borrowing money just for people to be doing party. We cannot be borrowing money for people to be traveling, you know, without any commensurable, uh, you know, uh, benefit to the nation. We cannot be borrowing money for people to simply be stealing, outright stealing the money, as we have seen now, you know, uh, from the money that they, ha that, that, that they have borrowed, you know, even the Auditor General had said that many of those monies have been actually cannot be accounted for. I give you an example, Nigeria borrowed 3.4 billion US dollars to help Nigerians against the uh, COVID. Today, officially, Nigerian government, speaking to Nigerian government, said that those money cannot be accounted for. These are borrowed money. And the worst part of it is that Nigeria is borrowing a lot of money from commercial banks. So this laziness, this roseless approach to uh, collecting free money, easy money, not free money, because it's not your free money, you have to pay. Nigerians must pay through their sweat. And some few individuals are collecting this money without cost to any putting any developmental project. So if government is telling you that the money government collected is not accounted for, is stolen, so you can see that there's a problem. 3.4 billion was meant to help Nigerians who were suffering from COVID. But what wicked, you know, unpatriotic officials have done was to siphon that money. And this is contained in the Auditor General. Auditor General report is not NGO report. It is government report. So government indicting government. So you can see the level of looting that is going on in the name of borrowing you know, uh, money. So they borrow it in the name of Nigerians and you see what happened. You see recently what happened, a ministry was established to help deal with the poverty and, you know, uh, humanitarian situation. The ministry official have turned that place into, you all know what has happened. And this problem is in virtually every government agency. We cannot be borrowing money in the name of Nigerian people and then you are actually diverting this money to your own personal pocket. So it is a big problem we are facing and therefore you know, we must you know, draw the attention of the National Assembly to stop because otherwise history will go against them tomorrow. You might be out of National Assembly as a legislator, but your, you know, your name would be among the people that endorse this reckless, you know, um, um, loans and borrowing but you then also ask what are you doing with the money because if you approve you should be able to ask how the money is utilized if your own power you think it is to give them the power to go and borrow and you do not bother to know how the money has been used whether it meets with the um the conditions you know under which you say you are going to borrow Definitely, there's a accountability deficit and there's also negligence from your own part. So, history members of the National Assembly should remember that any action they have done is recorded, and history one day will vindicate their, you know, uh, role. So, therefore, why some, you know, you know, we are we are worried that um, 37 percent of the Nigerian total external debt, you know, uh, figure is on to private accreditors whose loan attract between six to nine percent and shorter repayment period in comparison to loans from multinational 
uh, multi uh, military multilateral and uh, bilateral sources with interest rate of uh, between one to three percent and longer payment period of 10 to 30 years so what nigerian officials are doing because they have exhausted they are virtually exhausting even the credibility to borrow from the multilateral you know uh, sources they are now going to private banks to borrow in a huge interest and they will give you short period to pay if you don't pay there's a consequences to that so why are we in need why must we have a over bloated uh dubious budgetary allocation uh, you know appropriation you can do the appropriation on the basis of your own capacity you don't need to go to commercial bank to be borrowing money to say you want to do that what do you do with this appropriation are you touching the lives of nigerians education wise healthcare wise productivity wise industrialization wise infrastructure wise we are still battling with the electricity we are still battling with water in many communities no drinking water in many communities no access to road in many communities no functional hospital and even schools are not there so what are you borrowing for is it just to borrow to siphon the money for the next election this is absolutely unacceptable we cannot continue this way because the consequences of this reckless borrowing is that you are plunging the country and the people in a more into more poverty into more you know um, a serious debt repayment <coughs> ladies and gentlemen it is a major problem that we are facing and uh we think that um the results that debt servicing will cost 98 percent of our budget and the government will spend six times more on servicing debt then on building new schools and hospital in 2024. This unsustainable level of public debt highlights the need for the assessment of government spending and revenue generation. Where must you go and be spending be doing Father Christmas with borrowed money? You know? So the way things are, even our income, the revenue from for Nigeria cannot even pay the service of servicing the debt that we have. This is a big problem. As advocate of economic justice, the tax justice and governance platform was the subnational platforms across 18 states in the country and the national secretariat coordinated by CISLAC and steering committee by uh, members of Action Aid, um, Christian Aid, CDD, Center for Democracy and Development, International Budget Partnership, and other Nigerian, uh, and as well as Nigerian Labor Congress, uh, Oxfam, and other partners that we have here. Uh, you know, we want to lend our voice once again to this growing concern in demonstration of its civic responsibility. Because as civil society organization, when we see things are going this way, we need to raise alarm. We need to blow the whistle so that you know appropriate you know official would take decisive action the escalating debt burden has profound implication for the well-being of nigerian citizens and the failure and failure to act quickly could result in an additional 23 million nigerians living in poverty and 80 million working age citizens without full-time job by 2030 I think we don't even, I don't think we will even wait or the situation will reach 2030 before we experience what we are even saying. We are just being conservative. Many factories have closed down. They have all left the country because of corruption, because of poor infrastructure. So you don't even have, you know, sources where you collect even revenue because these companies are living. And those ones that are here, like the multinational corporation, especially the oil company, are refusing to pay uh, 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 the, the, you know the taxes that they are supposed to pay which should be used for development secondly we've seen this fraudulent tax waiver tax um, uh, you know yeah because many of the people that are given that tax waiver tax holiday and uh, what is it tax cons uh, 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 yeah they are this tax incentive they are many of them they 
have link with those companies. That is why we have been talking about beneficial ownership so that we will know exactly if you can now, you know, profit or you can give trillion of tax that's supposed to come to the government, you will give it to some few individual and without them committing to real infrastructure development, then you can see that somebody has a hand in it. Otherwise, there's no way somebody, you know, there's no way you, you are looking for a uh, part trillion and then somebody, you're supposed to collect 10 trillion from somebody and then you are not bothered. Something is cooking there. That is why we have been calling for uh, compliance or implementation of the beneficial ownership so that we will know the real people sabotaging the Nigerian economy. In response to these multiple challenges, the National Assembly, as a steward of the nation's economic well-being, should acknowledge the critical importance of exercising their mandate towards steering the nation back on the faith of economic stability and prosperity. Uh, before Nigerians, they don't want to Japa. Because what are you going to go and Japa when you are better up here? But today, Virtually every young person who has been prostrated because they have finished school 10 years, 15 years, no job. They are, they are leaving the country and the officials are not, you know, seeing this as a major threat to national development. Because one energetic, young, agile people who are supposed to be involved in productivity, who are supposed to be helping to generate resources, are leaving the country. And you think you are okay because you have a rented enjoyment, then there's a problem. Many Nigerians, unfortunately, in the process of doing Japa, they even die. You know, in trying to cross the sea, in trying to, you know, leave the country for them to survive, they end up being, you know, uh, in trouble. And all this as a result of poor management of our resources. Because there's no justification why Nigerians should be suffering the way they are suffering. Because God has given us every resources that you can think of, including human resources. But because the country is not investing even in human development capital, many people are left unskilled. So those who, who cannot japa, they are engaged in Yahoo Yahoo. They are engaged in all sorts of fraudulent and criminal things. And many politicians are now recruiting these young, agile people that will be helping in productivity to be engaging in violence, political violence, communal violence, religious violence, and all sorts of things. They are using Nigerians to be killing themselves. This is the reward of what our public officials are giving to our society. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, our recommendation as outlined law, while not exhaustive, aim to mobilize adequate legislative responses that will strengthen debt management, enhance revenue mobilization, plunge leakages, and prioritize government spending in critical sector. Um, you are all aware they brought in budget here. They brought in, uh, executive brought in, you know, uh, budget envelope without need assessment. And our members, our legislators, they just simply support it. They just simply allow it to go. In other places, where, in other places where they take national development priority, you don't do budget envelope. You do budget based on need assessment and you do not need to recklessly go and borrow in order to steal. You borrow for development, and what you borrowed is supposed to pay back, you know, the debt that you borrow. So when you borrow and you consume, you eat the money, you carry the money, go do party, you carry the money, go do, you know, enjoyment in abroad, leaving the masses swelling in absolute poverty, allowing the infrastructure to decay, to collapse, definitely you should ask yourself whether what you are doing, you know, is right. And you know, the funny thing is that many of them who are in the leadership position, they are up to 60 years, 
Some of them, they are even 70 years. So at 70, you are still doing accumulative, primitive accumulation. You are still gathering money. When will you have time to eat the money then? They are at the age of 70, 75, they are still stealing money in this country. If not with kidneys, what is it? So they gather the money, they die, their children will now go and start taking drugs with the money. That is the consequences of what you have done with the Nigerian people. You put people in poverty, you put them in trouble, you engineer crisis and trouble, you pack all the money, and then you die, your children will now start going to go and take drugs. Or if you send, send their children to UK or America to study, they will go and join gangs, international gangs, international drugs, you know, uh, you know, peddlers. This is what big men, many children are going through because the money is not a legitimate money. It's a stolen money. They have, they have they, they deprived the Nigerian people from having, you know, a, a life, you know, a decent life. How many Nigerians can afford to pay rent here in this Abuja? Not talk of owning the houses. How many Nigerians can actually, you know, their income, their salary can take them more than 10 days? Before, before, before the middle of the month, already are borrowing money. Because everything has been taken. They say that no subsidy for anything. No subsidy for education, no subsidy for health, no subsidy for agriculture, no subsidy for education, no subsidy for anything. Yet, they have more than subsidy in their own. In other places, you put the people first as a leader. But in Nigeria, once you come from local government to the state, to national, the only the ultimate priority for many of our public officials is them. They pack and pack and pack up to the end of the their 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 visit. Now there's a there's a there's a there's a dollar scarcity. The dollar has gone up, and some official they have gone to the real the change to be arresting them in the process, even you know stealing their money as if they are the cause of the problem. The cause of the dealer scarcity is allegedly that some of the public officials, when they are in government, they steal the money to go and buy the dollar. They buy dollar and gold, and the demand for the dollar is more, and Nigeria is not making that dollar because of the laziness and the productivity, because there is no you know, um, you know, uh, creative you know, uh, incentives to develop different sectors that will enable us to have income. You can imagine today, from the money that government is sharing every month, if every state is taxed to go and build a world-class factory that will be producing, let's say, you know, state A, produce cotton, do it well, take it out, you can imagine how much money will be coming. If this state B will be asked to go and focus on a particular factory to go and produce, you know, um, um, leather, you will have actually create job and you will have made more income in dollar. Now we are not making the dollar and some people who have run out of ideas, they are going to go and arrest people who are registered business people. It's not the people in Zimbabwe that are causing the dollar problem. It is the government official who are stealing the money to go and buy the dollar and gold. Yes, I don't making the dollar to go up because they don't care, they can buy it at any cost. And you that you are having maybe you know a medical bill to pay, or you have maybe one of your child or two of your children that you want to pay their school fees, you cannot afford it. So you can see the way they they, they engineer and structure the problems that we are even facing. So the issue is that public officials have connived with many banks to carry this dollar, if they allocate the dollar to the banks, what they do, the bank official and the some of the government official, they connive with them and you will not get the dollar in the bank. Today, go try, you know, even before they, they say, okay, no more giving, uh, you know, um, subsidy or, uh, uh, yeah, for, for dollar for people that have um, maybe medical or educational issue. What they do, when the CBNs send them the allocation of dollar, they will probably use maybe 5%. The 95% 
you will not see that dollar. It goes to people in the banking sector, in the financial sector, and some of the government officials who are supposed to be supervising how they disburse those dollars. This is the reason why you see this whole problem of uh, lack of sufficient dollar. And Nigerians, the demand for the dollar is higher, and you have pure dollar. That is why it can go to any amount. So this lazy way of attacking uh, people in Zimpo is not going to solve the problem. When they did the other time, had the dollar come down, they didn't come down. In fact, it went up. In fact, as, as a matter of fact, if the, even government itself, its own uh, dollar exchange rate is 1,000, I think it's 1,000, 1,500, right? No, no, I think the government, the government is, is even its government, the government own, is, 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 is high. So why can't you then say, okay, the dollar should be, should come back to what you made, which was like 700 plus, and make the dollar available to circulate, whether the dollar will now go up again. But because they are all involved in this scam, that is why the dollar will continue to rise up. As long as government officials will pack allocations and go and buy dollar and gold to, to store in their houses, the dollar will be scarce and it will be more expensive. So they better go and think ways in which they can actually stop this, stop looting, stop stealing. That's the only way this thing and make the productivity, you know, be enhanced and get Nigeria to get more income from its, you know, uh, sale of uh, properties. If our agriculture is working very well, that is a source we can make more dollar, you know. But you are relying only on petroleum. Even that one, almost half of the petroleum that we're supposed to have is stolen in the name of uh, oil theft. Oil theft is an official stealing of oil in Nigeria because there's no way anybody will come and steal that oil from abroad without carnival of the Nigerian, you know, um, officials. So it is, it is, uh, it is official stealing by official of Nigeria. There's no way any big ship will enter Nigeria without government knowing. The other day, when we shouted. They arrested one, uh, you know, sheep, and you know what? Instead of doing investigation, they burned down the sheep so that the identity of the owners of the sheep and the people that are doing the uh, carnival will not be known. So you see how our officials are actually putting us into more and more trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to uh, bring this recommendation, you know, so that you can help us draw the attention of our members and draw the attention of the nation of the crisis that we are facing. One, investigating the moment and the spending of, uh, uh, sorry, investigating the movement and spending of loans received by federal government in the past and the present administration, including but not limited to uh, the one that I mentioned, the 3.4 billion that they borrowed, which is meant to help Nigerians, but the money is not accounted for. The money had simply disappeared. Number two, revisiting legal and institutional frameworks related to debt management, emphasizing transparency and accountability. This includes accelerating the amendment of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. You know, when Nigeria wanted to collect that 3.4 billion, we wrote to IMF. We say, look, we are not opposed to you giving Nigeria money, uh, borrowing Nigeria, but there must be accountability and there must be proper expenditure management reporting and there must be safe reporting for the journalists if they want to blow the whistle. We told them that, look, be, you know, before you give loan to Nigeria, let Nigerians know that you are giving them loan. Because there are a lot of secret loan that they are collecting, which Nigerians they don't know. And I and you and every Nigerian is responsible to pay that. So I did not know what you have collected, and yet I must pay. That's not fair. So we say that whatever loan you collect, there must be explanation on what exactly you have done with that. Nobody is giving this explanation from the past administration to the current administration. And I think we as journalists, we should work investigative journalism power to investigate how all these loans, where are the loans, where are the, who are the people that have chopped that money? I think journalists should help to begin to do that. This, this will bring some level of decency and sanity. And we should also insist 
that before any financial accreditor gives money to Nigeria, they must make the terms known because it's a public money, so it should be public information. There should not be scarcity in terms of collecting this money and how the money is digitalized. Number three, redefining the purpose of incurring debts in clear terms of debts being for projects that will promote value change development, improve macroeconomic framework, develop infrastructure, and build strategic human capital. This will imply a deletion of the amendment in 2021 Finance Act, which introduced an ambitious or uh, ambiguous new terms called national interest as justification for borrowing. You know, when they want to steal, when they want to deal with you, they will say national interest. Which one is national interest? Define national interest clearly so that we understand it and we can hold you to account for that national interest that you. So the national interest is their pocket as evidenced by all this money that have disappeared. That's what they call national interest. You cannot borrow this huge amount of money on behalf of the poor people of Nigeria and the money is stolen and you say it's national interest. Where did the poor man got the money? So we want you journalists to help us draw the attention of some of the members. Some of the members will understand they are blackmailed to support this thing. But you should remember that you will be accountable not only to your constituency but to your God. If you are elected and you go and join, you know, people to do anything that is not right, that is not correct, you should remember that it's not only you are undermining your nation, but also you have to account tomorrow where you will where will you not have chance to depend or to justify anything because you have given the opportunity to critically examine. But many of them, because of peer, of um, maybe not going to be uh, giving prayer or not going to be uh, seen to be supporting, you know, the executive, they will simply agree that they should join in helping to destroy the nation by this reckless, you know, borrowing approval. We want members to understand that they are holding a very fundamental, very important thought. It's a throat, I mean, it's a trust. Your position is a trust. If you abuse it, you will not only account for it here, you will account it in the day, in the year after. Number four, stopping borrowing for recurrent expenditure, personal and overhead, and, you know, um, dilatory capital expenditure that, does, that, that adds no value to the economic growth, wealth creation, and development. Number five, strengthening debt is, you know, sustainability assessment through public debt review mechanism to assess the affordability and the risks associated with the new borrowing initiatives. In Nigeria, uh, the members here, yeah, they don't even sit down to say, okay, let's us even do critically analyze the risks, you know, involved in this. Members must always remember that they need to do those things so that they are not being seen as robust time. So that they are not being seen as people you know that are just um you know going to be used you know to mismanage the nation harmonizing tax laws and rate to do overlaps and you know uh inconsistency eliminates you know multiple taxation and improve tax revenue mobilization nigeria should adopt a comprehensive approach to taxation which categorizes taxes to income consumption and property tax. Every tax should fall under these three categories rather than having all manners of taxes all over the places with, uh, which are set out to start business owners and you know, um, you know at the end of the day the government is not even making anything. And this is part of the reason why so many you know, uh, investments are leaving because they are tired of this extortion and double taxation. The big companies, the big women, I mean the big men, they didn't pay the tax but, you know, the ordinary woman in the market, you know, you are doing double taxation for her. They will come and be harassing her, extorting so much, you know, money in the name of tax that is not recorded in the government post. We need to stop that. Establishing tax committee empowered to approve double tax agreement rather than the general flow of the National Assembly. 
the committee should be empowered to monitor and evaluate existing, existing tax treaties and agreements between the judicial uh, jurisdictions uh, to make the data available for government decision. Seen and harmonizing tax incentives frameworks that provide for clarity of policy goals of uh, policy goals of incentives, the periodic assessment and the monitoring of the tax um, tax incentives using monitoring and the evaluation framework, assessment of the cost benefit and distribu uh, distributional impact, and guidelines for timely reporting of tax expenditure. Number nine, reducing disc uh, discretionary powers of the executive institution with the statutory mandate and powers to regulate tax incentives and ensuring that the granting of the major incentive goes through the National Assembly. Because this kind of situation where you will give trillion as, uh, in, in the name of tax incentives, National Assembly should be worried. Why are you going to go and borrow you know, trillion and then you have trillion here that is going free. Does it make sense? You have this money here that it is yours and you are living it, you are dashing it and then you want to go and still be borrowing the same amount of money you are looking for. Why is this, um, you know, rationale in that? So we believe that there's no rationale, there's no right thinking in the way and manner in which these um, powers, some of these, you know, executive officers are doing. So we are calling on the National Assembly to do whatever they could do to compel the agencies to come and present justification why tax you know, incentives or tax holiday or whatever you know, um, uh, tax waiver you are going to give is going to be useful to the country, not useful to some few individual businesses. Because you know what, what happened? You go and set up a um, com communication company or building company or oil company and they give you tax you know incentives or tax waiver for five years at the end of the five years you change the name of the company you now reapply for another uh, tax you know uh, pre pre-tax it's only happening in nigeria because of the deviousness and corruption that is why the national assembly because if the national assembly members are involved at least the nigerian will hear there will be debate, there will be discussion, and there will be pressure from the public that you can no longer continue to give these millions of uh, uh, money. Prioritizing spending on policies and programs that will directly affect the general public, especially the low-income earners, such as uh, investing heavily in education, healthcare, uh, educa um, agriculture, and uh, future group empowerment programs in transparent accountable and sustainable manner um, with 20 percent number 10 with 27 percent of the country average household budget dedicated to um, fuel on the poor public transportation system appropriation of revenue and the reallocation of subsidy saving should also prioritize fixing the power and transport sector we are asking since when you remove this um, um, uh, uh, subsidy where is the money what have you done with the money President Tinubu should explain to Nigerians in a clear terms what they have done with this money since they have stopped and they deprived Nigerians, which at the end of, at, 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 as a result of that, inflation has gone up, difficulty of life survival has gone up. So they should tell us, or oh, is it part of the money they have given to the people in the Ministry of Humanitarian to be, you know, uh, looted? They need to explain. And I expected National Assembly to come and ask this question to the executive. Let the executive tell Nigerians what they have done with the saving of the subsidy. We disagree that you will be giving this monthly uh, money to the state and local government and hiding it under this subsidy sin. We are not in agreement with that. Nigerians no agree. Nigerians are demanding clear explanation. And if anybody chop that money, we will record it even after he or she leave power we will insist that that person must return that money so the public officials should understand that we are not going to leave them all this money that have been saved under this subsidy thing we are taking note of it they must return that money if they have stolen the money if they have embezzled the money if they have diverted the money we are taking record of that wherever they go whether they go abroad whether in nigeria they must return that money
we are taking notes. So they should better hear that. Finally, we are demanding accountability for the petrol subsidy savings like and the sincerity of the purpose in repealing the government uh, promises of renew hope to the millions of Nigerians who no longer have belt to tight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our uh, this is our, our message and uh, we hope that uh, this recommendation will go a long way in helping the journalists to frame the question of accountability, demanding explanation on what government is doing with this money they are borrowing or what, what are they doing with the money they have saved. We can no longer be taxing the poor, making life difficult, you know, making, you know, in fact, I'm, you know, bundling the poor people, making them to be thinking mad because many Nigerians now are moving, you know, thinking and sometimes they even, yes, sometimes they even go and uh, hit, you know, they are prone because life is difficult and these people, they don't seem to understand that things are difficult in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that these messages will get to the ear, you will help us to make sure that these messages get to the ear of the people that are supposed to hear. You can help us interview them, tell them this is what Nigerians are saying, or this is what Nigerians are demanding, so that they will remember that, look, come on, there will be accountability tomorrow. Because after you finish as a legislator or as an executive, we will follow you. We will ensure that we you know, follow every decision you have done that is anti poor that anti-Nigerian people. We will not let you. So you better hear that. Thank you very much. My name is Gochuku Munachi and I work with Sisla. So the focus of our conversation is debt. And you would recall that the states would require federal approval to even incur their own debts. Um, what we are also doing specifically to ensure that the federating units also are carried along in this conversation is to syndicate this engagement. So while we are speaking to you here, we have, remember we started by saying that the Tax Justice and Governance Platform is um, presently in 18 states across the nation. Um, so we, we are doing, having like a geopolitical zone approach to this engagement. So we have state platforms in each of the geopolitical zones actually conducting press briefings as we speak, where they are also reflecting on their state-specific concerns. So it's our own way of carrying, carrying everyone along. Thank you. Um, going to the question that you asked, I think it's important that um, Nigerians themselves become, Nigerians ourselves, become more responsible uh, in how we, uh, you know, in how, uh, in the marketplace generally. Uh, there is the inflation, quite all right, but it is that, um, for instance, if you have, if you see what happened with the cement uh, uh, commodity recently, uh, you know, the price was jacked up astronomically. And um, it went on for about two weeks until the Ministry of Works and um, Ministry of Trade and Investment had to call the players to a meeting. And after they call them to a meeting, they then now agree on a price threshold, which meant that the scarcity that was experienced uh, within that period was actually targeted at increasing price. Uh, but you're also aware that uh, the chairman of uh, BUA came out earlier this year to say that um, they can actually peg X factory price at 3.5 uh, uh, with variance, with price variance depending on where the commodity is landing. Uh, so you will now be thinking uh, a particular producer came up and said, we can do work with this price. And then just after that, some stakeholder within that industry tried to frustrate that effort created artificial scarcity, and then uh, I'm twisted people who are willing to do business responsibly to now push up the price of commodities. And that's what's happening in the marketplace generally. You see people bringing products uh, at a particular rate, and then once there's a shift at source, they then sell product that they brought at a particular rate, given what is now obtainable uh, at, at source now. I think we need to be more responsible, but again, it's a free market, you know. Uh, Nigeria is operating a liberal economy, and that means that uh, retailers, producers can determine price. But when you are operating a free market economy, it's important that regulations, stiff regulations are in place. 
uh, in advanced economies where this free market economy you know works very well is that government plays oversight strong oversight on the players and when they know that they will be disciplined then they behave properly but in nigeria you know nobody will go to sleep and wake up in the morning and nobody is asking anybody any question uh, so i think government needs to ask questions thorough questions and you know manufacturers need to respond to those questions and where they are found wanting they need to be disciplined Just like my colleagues have mentioned, um, one very key thing we must understand is the stakeholders involved in all of these conversations. Um, if you look at what has happened between the government and the business community and all the sectors we have mentioned here, it is more around organized financial crimes between the different sectors which we have pointed out from taxation to oil and gas to every industry like we can see. But very importantly, the other stakeholder why we are here basically is to also have the conversation through you to the legislators. The legislators hold the mandate to hold governments, ministries, departments, and agencies accountable. The integrity of this institution matters a lot to us. That's why we have come to you to also amplify our voices and the role that you play as journalists as well. This is why we are saying to you, um, join the course. It doesn't affect us alone. Um, as civil society, but we speak for the communities we work, we speak on behalf of the communities we work for, and we want to say that the National Assembly should stand up and do their job to make sure the integrity of government institutions are upheld rightly. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you all. My name is B because if you're looking at debt justice from different countries, some people, their debt justice is by asking the international community to pardon their country for debt. No, our debt justice here it's about responsible borrowing. That's uh, the justice we're asking for here is government should borrow responsibly and use the money for the benefit of the people. So our debt justice is not about you living large with people's wet and then going to go and beg to borrow more money to steal. So debt justice in Nigeria is borrow responsibly, use the money for the benefit of the masses so that we get the message of what's our debt justice all about in Nigeria. Thank you. I'm Victor Arokoyo, the head of program Christian Aid. Yeah.